this may make me so confused because I don't it's like uh, the, the chicken and the egg who, who came first the, the, the chicken or the egg yeah I and know. yeah this is very confusing um, I usually uh, pray for all the humanity and then um, one day I, I call this is just me explaining uh, the, uh, why I'm asking you to, to talk about this topic and to explain it really clear for for me and for all all the people because then I, I call to to a friend uh, in Christ um, and I asked him uh, if he believed in the in this kind of doctrine and he said no he didn't believe and he said that I should keep praying for all the humanity and I'm I'm keep praying for all the humanity that they accept Jesus Christ and they repent what do you think about this topic Jimmy yeah, yeah so that's a uh, very interesting and by the way I'm recording so um, here we go now let me make sure I got the question correctly. Did Jesus die for all or just the elect? Is that is that the question? Yeah, this is the question. Um, this is the the guy the guys from Brazil. They say that uh, Jesus only died for the elect. Is that am I saying that right? Yes, you you're saying that right, and uh, and also he said that. It's not good for us to 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 pray for all the humanity. We 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 only have to pray for the elect ones, not mm. pray for all the humanity because we're praying wrong, and that made my. my I don't know. I, I I I got so confused with this. Yeah, it's strange because. Um, for one, <laughs> let's assume that whoever is teaching this, let's assume that they're saved now. Well, before they were saved, they were unsaved, right? Yes. So it's, you know, this idea that, oh, it's wrong, you're praying the wrong way? Uh, I don't know. I, that's... You, you're getting too technical, I, I think, in my opinion. Jesus tells us how to pray. If you have any question, you can go to Matthew chapter 6. He, he tells us how to pray. Now, the, the idea that, uh, it, to me, it's just silly to say that there's a right way and a wrong way to pray. You, and this whoever teaches that has nothing in the Bible to support whatever silliness that they're trying to claim. Now, the question okay. of... Who did did Jesus did Jesus die for all or just the elect? Um, so, um, how do I how do I where do I start? Well, first of all, let me start at. Uh, let's take a look at something here. Who is the Jesus is the trying to think of the word not for hours only that's the phrase I'm looking for not for hours only let's see not for hours only the appropriate appropriate uh oh I can't say that word propitious appropriation appropriation I can read it for you if you want. <laughs> Propitiation. 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 <laughs> See, I don't know English very good. You know it better than I do. So, he is the propitiation. Propitiation. I can't say that word even after I hear it. Propitiation. 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 He is the propitiation for our sins. <laughs> And not okay. for hours only, mm -hmm. 
but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. So That's he, true. He died not just for us, uh -huh. but for the whole world. Let's go to John chapter 3. And, okay. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, perhaps you've uh -huh. read this before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. Uh -huh. And that would include the unsaved, right? Yes, the, the, that was the first step my friend used used to to tell me that that Brazilian preacher uh, is wrong. The, uh, it was uh, John. Th this this verse that you just show. Yeah. Um, that was the verse he used to uh, to to show me to tell me that that Brazilian priest is wrong. Yeah, in Second Peter chapter three verse 9 it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that uh -huh. all should come to repentance so the, the Lord is not willing it's not in the will of God that any should perish uh -huh. it's the will of God that all come to salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ that's uh -huh. the will of God the will of God is drawing all men to Jesus so what was the question that the Jesus didn't die for everybody that's ridiculous that's as if that person has no understanding of the will of God whatsoever and the problem what I hate about this is it takes advantage of people that don't know what the Bible says uh -huh. and, and so there's too many people in the world today teaching things uh, that sound like they're from the Bible but they're not and uh -huh. and they, it takes advantage of people that don't know what the Bible says and so that's why I encourage everybody to read the Bible and you know read at least one chapter a day but read every single day in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, Give us this day our daily bread. That's Daily bread is the word of God every day. Jesus, yeah. Jesus is the, the bread. Jesus is the bread. And so, Jesus is the word of God. So, in this verse 11, where it says, Give us this day our daily bread, this is in direct reference to the word of God. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's, very, it's very important. So what's that one verse that um, your adversary, oh, goodness sakes. Oh, I can't. Let me think. Give me a second. There's a verse, okay. something about a roaring lion or, oh, uh, what? No, my, my computer's stuck. There we go. Wow. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about, seeking whom he may devour. So we got to be on guard all the time. Uh -huh. Be on guard all yeah. the time. Yeah, that's true. Be sober, be vigilant. All right? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. It's it's just constant, and um, so we gotta we gotta be ready. We gotta be ready. Um, we're constantly getting it from every angle, and mm -hmm. mockers and scoffers disguising themselves as the as a, a man of God, and you know people love to quote the. Wolf and sheep's clothing verse, right? Uh huh. They have no. Most people have no idea. It seems to me like they have. 
No idea. What is that verse, anyways? Oh. Uh oh. No, 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 no. Oh, what is that verse? Oh, my goodness. This is interesting here. Um. What is that verse? There it is. That's. Oh, there it is. Ravening wolves. Okay, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward they are ravening wolves. False prophets, false teachers, people that aren't teaching correctly. And it's interesting to me that when Jesus is asked about the end of the world, the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I. Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many. We're getting warning after warning after warning including here in Matthew 7 beware of false prophets which appear to be you know sheep but inwardly they're wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah and I mean it's just it's so hard it's so hard you know just for believers to grow imagine being a, an unbeliever it takes a miracle for anybody to get saved in today's world yeah that's true it's so um, so hard uh, i no you 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 go ahead no first. no no you go ahead i'm done okay um uh, considering this this verse, uh, do you think uh, that um, a great preacher, great uh, in in this world world, uh, he has a lot of followers, and I myself I follow him in uh, one channel because he, he gives a lot of lessons and he is very um, he preaches a very good doctrine except some little points here and there uh, but this one it's not a little it's not little it's a, a big one this is uh, I, I don't agree, this is, uh, I think it's Calvinism, but do you think that if a, a great preacher like him that has a, a, a lot of followers and he seems to, to preach the, the sound doctrine except for three, two or three points, do you, do you think that he, he may be a uh, uh, a false doctrine, uh, a false prophet. Yeah. You think that he, he, pre he preaches uh, the sound doctrine uh, in almost everything, but when he falls, in, in, he fails in that point. That point is to leading the people in in, in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't think <clears throat> I don't think. Uh, any anybody whether they stand behind a pulpit or anywhere i don't think anybody should get one thing wrong and because once you get one thing wrong that puts you in a category of being a false prophet right okay. uh -huh. so you you there's no reason at all to not get everything exactly right okay uh -huh. now Having said that, uh, it's also important that we be willing to uh, consider that what we believed could be wrong, right? So let's, like for example, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So... We, we should not just be reliant on what another man says, but we should hear the whole matter, um, especially 
we we should put the Bible, the Word of God, above what other men teach. So let's say Reverend Smitty he comes along and he teaches this thing, and you're not sure if it's right, and then you go look in the Bible and you see what the Bible says is contradictory to what Reverend Smitty says. Well, you you've got to choose the Word of God over the Word of man, right? Right. No doubt at all about that. No doubt at all about that. So, let's imagine that you're Reverend Schmitty. Now, you should be open when somebody says, Hey, the Bible says this. You should be open to what the Bible says. And then consider and um, consider the, the whole matter, right? And I, you know, I I worry about that for myself. And then I, I see a lot of people uh, also have that same that same issue, the same struggle that I that I have or have had. And that is when you believe something, it takes a lot to get somebody to change their mind. Mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the at the end of the day, there's nothing more important than the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a that's a hard hurdle for somebody to get over, and it takes time. It takes time for everybody. You can't just come at somebody and say, "Hey, this is wrong," mm -hmm. and here let me show you what's right, because it takes time for them to to you know reconcile it in, in their own mind and to sort of redevelop their worldview, because a a person's worldview is really determine really it determines what they believe and also there's there's one other point in there that's uh, that's the ego uh, right. of, of all that we have all of us um, we have a big ego and that's why we have to be humble to believe in the world the word of God because we, uh, for uh, in if we want if uh, if you want to change your mind you have to be open mind and you have to be humble to accept that you you are wrong and that's a big problem and I know because I have people in my family that are um, that have or are I don't know the PhDs and they are they they know so much they have so much science how can they change their minds <laughs> right 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 it, you got to be willing to fall right you got to be willing yeah. to fall it's interesting um because there's a you know good number of people out there that got these degrees and they they hang their hat on the, on uh, on the wall. Yeah, I mean they they take a lot of pride in uh -huh. um, in in that sort of you know what they did when they were a 19 year old snot nosed kid, and uh, they they want to ride that out for the rest of their life. But man, you know there's a that's an ego problem like you talked about or a pride problem. In Psalm 19, verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And the simple here is a, just a word that kind of, it kind of means like dummies, like me, right? Uh -huh. Making wise the dummy. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to, have, you don't have to be smart. You don't have to have a high IQ. You can be dumber than dog do. And still be wise because of the testimony of the Lord and the law of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and so what you're talking about is pride, and that's a hard thing to to overcome. It seems, um, you know, it seems like everybody has that issue, right? Everybody. Yes. Yes. It's not all, just. All it's not just me. It's not just you. It's everybody. It's a hard thing to overcome, and I kind of, I kind of help, I kind of can't help, but think it stems from, uh, 
you know, this development in the public school system. Just hear me out on this. So when you are a child, your most formable years, you are led into a public school system and then for 13 plus years you are programmed to parrot or echo what the teacher tells you uh -huh. and you are uh, you rely on your ability to recall what the teacher has told you uh -huh. now you take pride in your ability to recall what the teacher says and then anybody that comes along and tries to challenge that well you're left to feel stupid and offended and you don't want to consider that hey what the teacher told you might have been wrong uh -huh. in other words the child takes pride in being and they think that because they are able to recall what the teacher said that they're smart and they take pride in being smart they it makes them feel good it makes them feel like they're worthy and somebody uh -huh. but yeah. what if what if what the teacher has said is wrong and so that's a hard thing to overcome and so that that's the problem right there that method is the problem whereas the proper method would be to understand what is being said it's one thing to say something I mean consider this consider this it even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart and nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away consider this that even today when people read the Bible they don't understand because the veil is upon their heart okay so so uh, um, they're able to read it they're able to recall it they're you know they're able to uh, quote the verses and all this and that mm -hmm. but they uh -huh. don't they don't understand it uh -huh. and that's really the key is to understand what the Bible yeah. is talking about and of course mm -hmm. That go that fall that goes back to um, uh, having faith, right? Thank you. Yes. So I, I just think that you know that's what's going on in the public school system is children are, are not taught to understand, but they're taught to parrot what the teacher says, and then of course that leads to a pride issue. Whereas when you get challenged, you don't want to. Uh, it hurts in a way to think that hey maybe you're wrong because if you're wrong then that means you're you're not smart right uh -huh. and then you're you feel like a dummy and that's hard to take well you know for somebody like me I've been the dummy I've been I've been wrong so many times it's not that big of a deal but for you know it used to be it used to be hard to take when I was younger and it's hard to take for a lot of people I understand that uh -huh. but yeah no that's what I think that's my opinion is a pr uh -huh. to your point is pride is a big deal right pride is uh, what keeps a lot of people back uh, I, I want to I, I'm reading at the, at the, this moment I'm reading the um, uh, book for, uh, first Corinthians and perhaps you can share Corinthians first Corinthians 1 verses 20 and 21 and then uh, chapter 2 verses no chapter chapter 3 verses 18 and 19. 18 and 19? Uh, no, uh, first, uh, first Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, 20 and 21. Okay. All right. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the, the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. 
It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. All right, and then you want yeah. me to read First uh, Corinthians chapter three, three, uh, eighteen and nineteen. Let no man deceive you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes. I read these uh, the day before tomorrow, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, and yes, it's so it's so interesting be because um, the only uh, science and knowledge that we have to to know to be really wise is the knowledge of God. The 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 no. Um, read the Bible and yeah that's it I, I, I now I'm stuck in words I'm sorry <laughs> no you're 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 right um, true knowledge uh, true wisdom comes from God and yes in the the knowledge and, and so-called wisdom of this world is just foolishness yeah it's foolishness to God and uh, I read something but let me okay but I, I think you 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 did uh, a good job showing, uh, 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 responding my question and answering my question, and I'm I'm glad that you helped me um, clarify my uh, my ideas. I already knew, but it's always good to to make a Bible study. Yeah. No, I. I... I agree. I enjoy it very much. Uh, it, it, do you have any last thoughts that you want to before we go? Yes, read the Bible every day, at least one chapter a day, as you said, that you uh, may not be fooled by false preachers. Preachers. Very good. I agree. Io concordo one hundred percent. Eu concordo também. <risos>